strange very strange hmm You are not on screen. Am I on screen now? AD, how are you, mate? I don't know what's going on because I've just spent the last 10 minutes talking to all you lot and you haven't been able to hear me. I think what it is is because I've my stream deck is not working today. So I think I clicked on the um, go live button and didn't wait for it to go live. So although the software went live youtube didn't go live <laughs> so we've got a a big lag where i've said hello to everybody oh dear oh dear i don't know what's going on there then that's 12 minutes i mean i've i've been live all the time honestly i've been replying to all your comments and everything so i've got to start again on i <laughs> apologies so timothy colin mac vision mac can't stay Aaron, Mr. Mancave, Sean, thank you for all your kind comments, mate. And uh, we will miss you today, as always. Martin, you didn't win the transmitter. Multi did, and it's still sat in the car with its label all paid, ready to go in the post box, and I forgot to put it in there. So I will get it off. Afternoon, Daniel's been in holiday in Kent. And Jess, afternoon, Jess. Chris, super chat. Thank you very much, Chris. And he is my, my biggest customer at the moment. RV's in. It's all my folks. <laughs> Michael Hyde, Derek Cooper, Galena Crystal. I don't think I've got any of those. RV's saying the Stabister is uh, diodes using an amplifier bias circuit, not a normal diode. So I'm just quickly going back down through. I've been down through the chat once, so, so you have to bear with me. <laughs> oh dear. Mike Cass, Rob Tiverage, hi. Christoph, hi Christoph. Retro Tech. Barry Charney, Ben Humphreys, Rob's radio channel. Uh, who else we got in? I think we said hello to Ben. Multi's in. Just said about your uh, your transmitter multi. I bought the bought the postage for it on Friday. So Friday's my day off. So I thought uh, I'd get it in the post, but forgot to post a blimmin' thing. Andy Beck, David Tank, Derek Tuffman, Gavin's in. Mick McGinn. Hi Mick. Millen Chip. Cheer now. I don't know if it's gear, gear, but that's the very kind gentleman that sent me this lovely radio to have a play with. So thanks again, gear, all the way from Norway. So radio's come on vacation, that. Lee Bainan, hi Lee. Benji's on the tablets. <laughs> Derek, yeah, RT1 closing. I have got some footage here that I might try and show you later i recorded like the last seven minutes of it before it went off air on friday night i'd had a few beers mind you so there might be some there might be some slurring in the commentary <laughs> oh dear darts nights see on a friday friday's darts nights i mean you think that rt would be a bit more considerate not closing down on a darts night wouldn't you you could wait till the Saturday. Uh, who else have we got? The arms Russy B's in. Hi Russ, how are you? Secret engineer. How you doing, Rich? Ba -ba -ba -ba. Still catching up, still catching up. Oh, I have done this, but here you go. So in Norway, they turned off FM five years ago, and you only have that plus, really? Flippin' heck. Eighty, high eighty. I think we're. I think now I'm up with you. 
Jedi Master of Radios, Chris. I don't know, that's a bit... Can I live up to that? Long latency. Now, what it was is um, I tried to push the button to go to go live and then jump back onto the software to, to stream with. And um, for some reason, it just didn't, didn't go across. So I had to go back into the YouTube and click on the button there. Just too, too, um, trying to be too quick. That's the problem. Thomas Kitts. Hi, Tom and Susie. Paul Drake. Hi, Paul and Rocco. And Rocco's saying it's the best sounding portable in my collection. Now, I've been after one of these for quite some time now. And um, Gia has um, messaged me a couple of times with ones for sale, and I've always missed out on them, or they've, they've been a bit, bit ropey. And um, he's come across this one. He's actually picked it up for me. So thank you very much again, Gia. And it's got some, it's got some issues that Gia has pointed out already, but I literally have not tried powering this up. I thought I'd power it up live with you guys, and then we can uh, we can sort it out together. Play it. You can, probably will be interested in Million Chip. One day when you're playing darts against your mum, you scored three bullseyes. Hell. Afternoon, Ken. How are you? And Mark J's in. Hi, Mark. Mana Tree. Yes, Timothy. Yeah, that's the boy for the cassette bouts. The man or the company. Mana Tree on. Um, in fact, I've got one of their logos down here. I've got a couple of belts they sent me recently. If you can see the, the logo. Oh, it's not going to focus, is it? Because I'm on the wrong camera. Yeah, mana tree. Their belts are a deck tack. Well, that's not going to focus, is it? It's got to be back here, look. <laughs> deck tack. So, um, yeah, they've been they've been very good. I've got some more um, cassette jobs coming up as well soon. That one very interesting one that uh, John's sending me. So. You've just done a 10 mile hike to hospital, five miles there, five miles back for a couple of x-rays. That's a fair old track, um, Rich. Flippin' heck. It is an unusual radio. Um, I have heard they're supposed to be really good. And like I say, I've, I've got reviews back when these came out. In fact, I think this is the one that scored the highest in... Um, in those witch reviews that I had. I want to see if I can find those. I think I know where they are, so I might go and grab them in a minute. We can have a look at those, uh, the review back in the day. Cyberflyer, afternoon Cyber, how are you? Right, well, so let's get over. I was gonna go. I've got no stream deck because I normally control the live stream. I've got a little a little device in front of me here with all buttons on for all the different cameras. Well, I haven't got any of that today because yesterday it said, did you want to upgrade the software on it? You know, there's an upgrade available. Click here. So I upgraded it and now it don't work with the software, which is great, isn't it? <laughs> Brilliant. Afternoon, prior. How are you? My oh, watch keeps... Beeping off because it's a smartwatch. Right, okay. Let's shut that up. Uh, the TP41's a lot easier to work on than the satellite. <laughs> yes, I, I can see that. In fact, it, it doesn't look too bad. The only thing that people are, mo are not moaning, people are of commenting in is to um is getting the case off of it Gio. apparently that's that's a bit tricky afternoon les yeah i did pop down to the holesworthy rally this morning didn't um didn't buy anything but i did get a couple knobs from young steve who's one of my patrons so he gave me a couple knobs for my um heath kit my heath kit um capacitor bridge or bridge. Uh, 
updates for risk i can brick some devices yeah i mean it's lit i mean if i show you should better show you what it is it's this So this is the stream deck that I use, if I can get it uh, in right. So that's my streaming laptop. And this is the stream deck. So I've got a button, if I can work out which way around to put the thing. So I've got a button for each camera. So that's, that's my webcam. That's the Nikon, which is my front facing camera. I've got the main camera at the top. So you push that, it should be a little picture. A little picture in these, these are, um, uh, L LCD screens. Each one of these is a little tiny screen, and you basically push it for the different functions. But um, for example, if I push main camera now, that should switch the main camera on, but it's not doing anything. Um, so I need to restart this really. But if I do it, no, it won't affect the stream. I might just unplug this in a minute and plug it back in again. And it might um, it might suddenly decide to um, to work again. But yeah, that's the stream deck that I run the live stream from. It's a very useful bit of kit. If any of you do live streaming, then uh, it's a big help. So I've got to work out where I've got that plugged into. It's definitely plugged in somewhere, but I don't really know where. Oh, yes, it is plugged in here. Let me just unplug that. Hopefully, it won't um, it won't pull the stream off. So I've unplugged I've un unplugged it from the USB thing. So let's plug it back in again. Reboot in. Still the same. <laughs> it's, that's not made any difference, apart from my streaming lights flashing now. Happy birthday in two weeks, Rob. Just take the handle off it and the wooden case splits in two halves. Yeah, sort sort of get that, Jira. It's got some other piece inside or something, but you know. You need to restart it and have a reboot. Yeah, I know. I'm not going to reboot because it'll do weird stuff to the stream. Hang on. And now that one's... Oh, that's better. No, it's on. Right, let's go over to our um, our penguin friend who's been waiting very patiently in the wings with a beer for me. Oh, I'm over there now. That's different. Let's go over there then. Let's go to the usual place. And today he's got me a very nice Abbott Reserve. Now this, I do like Abbott, um, but the Abbott Reserve is like another step up it's um 6.5 percent it's quite strong but it's still got the abbott taste but i don't know it is nicer so if you like abbott you need to try one of these because it is very nice thank you penguin still got some battery life left in him loft soon penguin give me the get off that's my glance <laughs> No, there's no reset pillow on it, are we? It's um, it's a nice bit of kit, and it really, really has um, made the live streaming a lot easier than it was before, especially with um, screen captures that sort of thing. That's going to be really difficult without that. Well, it's not going to be difficult. It's just going to be very messy, very messy. Your birthday on Tuesday. 22 now, Les, is it? So, chill, Penguin. Bye-bye, yeah. Go on, get off. Who's trying to steal the limelight, Penguin? Afternoon, Rich, how are you? Hope you're okay, mate. I need to find my Gus Honeybun's birth birthday badge that some um, Spanky gave me. 
Anyway, cheers, everybody. Aaron is saying, is there any difference in sound between a three and four ohm speaker? I wouldn't have thought so, Aaron. It really is dependent on the speaker, not the ohms. How are you switching cams without that buttons on the computer screen? Yeah, the software I'm using here is um, sort of like um, a live streaming software. It's vMix is the software that I use. And if I share the screen with you, uh, which is really busy, but you'll get the gist of it, look. So this is the screen that I'm using. So you can see here as I throw up, this is like fade in so I can this whatever's in this screen I can make live with these buttons so I have to stick me in this screen look and then wipe that across that makes me live back into there I can do picture in picture so everything that I do is on here so all my audio is down in this down in this section on the bottom here that's my audio these are all my cameras with everything that's on the cameras so instead of having a button on my desk to push i've got to physically get the mouse and click on that for example just click on that one and then wipe that across you get the gist it is busy it is busy but um it's looking even busier in this window because this is this is a mirror of everything that I'm looking at already. But um, yeah, it's not, not the easiest thing to get to grips with, to be fair. It's t it took me quite a while to get used to what I was doing and to set all the buttons up and all that sort of stuff. But um, got there in the end, got there in the end. So let's get back, let's get back to me for a minute. Band lab, probably a similar sort of thing, Peter. Jimmy Young's program. Yeah, you're a little bit before me, Les. Not a massive amount. I'm a big 6-0 next year, Les. So, uh, yeah, the big 6-0 is on its way. You haven't missed nothing, Rich, now. And me waffling all again, as usual, Les. It certainly did take a fair, fair bit of um, setting up, to be fair. Took me a long time to get through. I still don't know it now. I know enough to do it. Yeah, live streaming earns you next to nothing from YouTube, Aaron. You're quite right. Um, but I enjoy live live streaming. I enjoy talking to you guys live. It wouldn't be the same with a pre-recorded video, would it? I remember Gus Honeybun, yeah, and Judy Spires. She did used to beat him, didn't she? <laughs> A youngster, Timothy's saying. You can give me another 10 years. Thank you, Derek. <laughs> oh, you mean you've got 10 years on me? <laughs> yeah, so the big 6 0 next, not this November, the following one. Right, let me. Um, I keep going to push a button there, and it just doesn't work. Let me go and get the um, the victim for today. Now, Gia's very kindly um, sent me some very good schematics and service info for this. Very, very well printed, very clear, which is always difficult to get. So I don't know whether you've got the original service manual, Gia, but some great copies, mate. Not your usual scans. So here we are. There he is. He's got it backwards, haven't I? That's a good start. It's, it's actually smaller than I thought it would be. Looking at the pictures, I always imagined it to be the similar sort of size to like... um an R7707 or a Hacker Herald, something like that. 
but uh, it is actually a lot smaller than I thought it was. Not that that's a bad thing, it's a good thing. But what have I got I can compare it to? If I put, I've got a case here for a Hacker Herald alert. If I put that up against it, you can see it is, it is definitely smaller than that. And width wise as well. So it's, it's actually smaller than I thought. Right, so I imagined it to be much bigger. Because I say, they do give them really good reviews. And I must try and find that, um, that article in the Witch magazine, which I have got somewhere right now. Let's get, let's get myself organized. There we are. No, that's the wrong one. <laughs> let's try that one. There we are. Yeah, it does. It puts some um, shortcuts in via the software, Rich. So in the settings here, I, I can set up each button individually uh, to put all sorts of different things on screen. I could do with getting some um, audio effects on there as well. I could do that as well. Boom radio. I heard of that. Hi, John Darwin, how are you? I'm across the pond. Fifty-three born in seventy, Aaron. Yeah. So I was sixty-four. You must be the youngest there, Rob. I'm not sure. Nick's uh, Nick's usually in. He's uh, he's one of my younger viewers. You like that, Gavin? 59. Yeah, Volvo radios do sound nice. Danish, how you doing, mate? I'm totally bold around 21 years. I'm aimed at the baby boom generation. What's the baby boom generation? Is that the baby exploders? What's, what's, what's the boom thing? So yeah, this is, um, this is a very, very well-made radio. I mean, it's, um, I was just looking at it yesterday because Les came over yesterday. We were talking about stabisters and trying to work out what the hell it was. But um, if we look at the Kessler, I mean, this, this is, it looks, it looks to me, looking at the underside, that this is veneered, but the veneer goes it's, it goes at 90 degrees almost. How do they do that? It's, it's a veneered wrapped around and it is literally as 90 degrees look. So you can just about see the, the layers of the ply underneath that. But um, that's a really, really tight band. So they've done good to, to I bet they split a few of those while they were, were practicing doing it. So um, this this does need refinishing this, and I'm, I'm I'll get your advice what you think is going to be the best thing to do here on this because I think I think Danish oil wouldn't be right for this one. I think it would darken the wood too much. You can see it's sort of got a got a sort of sheen to it, so it's it's like a satin. It's like a satin finish the wood on it. So I want to try and keep that as accurate as possible and I could just put one coat of Danish oil on it which would leave it as a sort of satin finish so that's a possibility but it would dock on the wood a little bit so I was thinking of getting some satin spray varnish and trying on it but not 100% sure yet it's going to need going over with some wire wool because it looks it looks oh, I don't know if you can quite see it but see the spots it almost looks like it's got damp well, it's got it's been rained on perhaps so i need to get some wire wool i think and take the old finish off very gently because i mustn't go down i can't sand it because i'll go through the veneer and then it looks like this fretted panel has been added in afterwards but yeah very well made it's um 
very nicely made cabinet for sure. As far as the front goes, let's prop that up on its end and I'll get the camera down. You can have a look at the front of it while I go and see if I can find this witch advert. Just get rid of my picture in picture. So I've done a little bit of research on this. Well, a fair bit of research actually, especially trying to find out what that stabister was and what it did. Let's just see if I can quickly put my hands on these witch magazines a minute. I should have put them back where I got them from, but that's highly unlikely. If it's going to be plopped on top of somewhere, that's bad. Yeah. I don't hold up much hope because I can't physically get in there at the moment because I've had a bit of a, a shuffle around to get my brother in. When he stayed a couple of weeks ago. No, I can't find them off the top of my head. I will see if I can dig those out. And get them and we'll have a look through it next week i thought they were here to hand but um i've either put them back away where they belong in which case i can't get in there or i've put them somewhere i shouldn't oh, more than likely i put them somewhere i shouldn't So it is a four band radio, long wave, medium wave, short wave, and FM. Short wave is from six megs up to 18 or 49 meters to 16 meters. Full, full range FM up to 108. So it's got the full FM on it and long wave, medium wave as, uh, as per the normal band plan for those. And we have got some inputs on the side. Now, this was a little bit strange, and I was trying to work this out yesterday with Les, because this is a nine volt radio. Um, it is designed, it's got a little kit that enables it to go in. It's got a little kit that enables you to fit it in a car. This one hasn't, but it's, it was available back in the day. But we've got a 12 volt socket on here. Um, when you look at the schematic th there's no voltage regulator or anything in it so basically if you have it on batteries it's nine volt you plug it in with a, a power adapter now i assume that there was a power a mains adapter available because it says in the in the the um, service manual it, it mentions the mains adapter So it takes 12 volt. We've got tape input, external speaker, headphones, and external aerial. And if you're looking underneath, this would be the um, connector for, for the car kit, I assume, here. And uh, re reading about it, it's very unusual in that you've got the dial here for long, long wave, medium wave, and short wave. You know, you see that moving the dial. But when you're in short wave, the FM, the FM button acts as a, as a fine tune for short wave. Very strange, but you can see there's a, a delta s written on it 
So that button is um, fine tuned for shortwave. <laughs> Strange, very, very clever. You know, that's one of the things with these these um, radios that have got a lot of shortwaves all on one band. It's very difficult to tune in between them sometimes, but um, fine tune enables that to be done. So say this is exactly as it's been sent. It's, I've not cleaned it. I've not taken it apart. I've not turned any power on. I was wondering what this um, what this label here means now. Whether Gear can can tell us if I get it on its some um, side again, I'll, I'll zoom in on that label. Is it because it's not it's not the Norwegian flag? Is it a French French flag? It's got plus. So it's got plus one two five on it. I'm really not sure what that is. Let me catch up with the um, the chat a minute. It's Norwegian, Aaron. George Bodley, how are you, mate? Let me catch up. I'm I'm a bit behind. So you have a three ohm speaker. Do you think you, you need an additional speaker to use a four ohm speaker? Four ohm should be fine with it, Aaron. Um, I think you're not supposed to go down in ohms, but I think you can go up. Is, is that correct? I'm sure somebody can um, can correct me on that. I'm a baby boomer, am I, Timothy? <laughs> Great. You're a lot from the 50s. Oh, hey. Just broke your B&O standard 508 volume pot. What? Steam bending, George. Yeah, that would... Um, it's very, very clever how they've done that. Because, I mean, they've got to do it on four edges. I bet, there's, I bet they had a few broken ones in, in the process. You're a 60s baby, John, same as me. Thanks, Peter. I do repair CB stuff, but it's not something I do for other people, really. Just just a little hobby for myself. You've never been a drinker or a smoker. I've never smoked, but I've had the odd drink. Acrylic satin spray varnish. That's what I was thinking, Lee, really. Thanks, Christoph. It is a lovely radio. They went bankrupt in 78. They made a lot of tape, tape decks. They were very famous for tape decks, weren't they, Tambor? Okay, I was just, it's done a big jump now. We believe it's from around about 1970, Aaron. I've got it in the radio and television servicing book. So if anyone's got the old radio television servicing book, it's in the 19... If I can do it without knocking my point over. If it'll focus... It's in the 1974-1975 radio and television servicing books. So if you've got a set of these... You dig out the 1974-1975, it's in that one. It's always a good good way of dating a radio if you're not sure. I mean, I think Radio Museum gives it as around about um, 1970. You could buy a mascot battery eliminator to it, okay. I couldn't find a picture of that, Jer. You wouldn't happen to have a picture or anything of what that battery eliminator looks like, would you? Some Telefunken tube radios have the shortwave find done in via the FM dial too. Okay, Crystal, thanks for that. Does anyone remember when radios used two batteries? Um, there's a lot 
lot of radios use two batteries, Aaron. You'll have to be a bit more specific on that. A lot number it could be, but... I don't know. It looks actually it looks like the X may have been Andra, is it or is it a T even? I'm not sure. Is that the French flag? Blue, white and red? Is that French? It's encased in Norwegian wood. Looks teak. Hi Doug, how are you? Yeah, Aaron's saying it is the French flag. Yes, I've heard that there is another version that actually says on the doll here, US version, I believe. And I think it's got the marine band on it and it's got different um, shortwave bands. Rocco. Afternoon, Anthony, how are you? Ken? Down in ohms draws more current, can damage. Eight ohm would be quieter. Yeah, so as you go up in ohmage, the volume would decrease, but um, you can damage the amplifier if you um, if you go lower. Don't touch the VCO transistor. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> why, Harvey? Tell me why quickly. No, you don't, Aaron. It'll run fine on a 4-ohm speaker. You could run an 8-ohm speaker on it, as someone just said, but um, it will be quieter. Oscillator buffer. <laughs> oh, no. Three volt and 90 volt batteries. Yeah, all the all that's what I'm saying. All the hacker, the hacker heralds, and that have two two uh, PP PP nine batteries, don't they? So I've got to assume then that we can use the bench power supply to power this up via the side socket, which is what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna stick nine volts in it to start with, because um, it feeds in exactly where the batteries feed in. Now it's center pin, it does say here on the side, center pin is negative, which I'm set up for, and it's 12 volts. So, how do we turn it on? Push for light. On oh, off, it's on that switch there. Right, let's pop that in. Let's turn the volume down. Okay, well, it's pulling 30 milliamps. for when it stopped. Or did I knock the volume? That's strange. Hang on, what's going on there? Or is this the stabister thing that's playing up? Possibly. Alexandra Tavros are being suitably thoughtful and spontaneous. 
The light works, look. That's actually a very bright light. Could be a bad aerial connection. Not sure what's going on there. Uh, let's try. Yeah, there's something, something in the side, not quite. Yeah, there's something. So we've got um, a loose connection or something there. I think Gio did point out that there was a, the amp was intermittent. So I think we've got uh, an amplifier issue there. Let's just catch up with the rest of the chat. Afternoon, Mike, how are you? From the west of Ireland. We're taking the mickey about the faulty radio the other week. Yeah, last week that was a tricky one, wasn't it? Both transistors gone. What's that? One million two hundred six. Hundred twenty-four thousand were produced until nineteen seventy-five when the TP forty-three was introduced. Okay. Gerard, how are you, Gerard? Many old radios used to use a low voltage as well as a high voltage. Right, yeah, so like an HT and an LT battery. <laughs> what wattage of 4 ohm speaker should you use in your radio? What radio is it, Aaron? Most of this type of radio that we we look at, you don't really need much more than one watt on the speaker. Um, so, I mean, a 10 watt speaker is a fairly common output. That would work fine. It's not going to be the aerial connection because it's the same on medium wave, which doesn't use the, the uh, telescopic aerial. It certainly can. That's the fault, dear. Okay, no worries. Fun fault. We're all ready at the tap test. <laughs> Code silver on the antenna con connection. Upside down. Do the Ferguson television fix bang the side of it? I need to be fondled. Okay. So um, I think it's time to look at getting this apart. Just to have a look. We've definitely got some sort of intermittent connection there, and I think Gia did say that um, there was an intermittent connection in the amplifier, and also the Stabista is leaking. So shall we have a quick come, quick look at what this Stabista thing is? Now I've found a couple references to it. Oh, I can't do screen cap, can I? Flipping thing. Um, so, apologies, it's not going to be a very good transition, but I'm going to go to my desktop and wipe, and then I'm going to go on to this page. So, this is Doz's blog. 
Andy Dawes Blogspot. Tamper TP41 and the mystery of the Stabister. It's howling, so... Um, This is someone's blog. Now, there is another uh, one. I was trying to find it in my history just now, but um, it's gone for a minute. I'll find it again in a minute because it does go into it in a bit more detail. Um, so it does tell you about taking the case off, removing the screws left and right of the handle. Hopefully we are on that, this screen. Yes, we are. And I'm still up in the corner. Bend the handle out of the way and then take the strip off. Remove the wooden clamshell, remove the knobs, and remove the top. Remove the two handle retaining plates. It's worth how they sit in the air. Yeah, okay. Remove the speaker. So I think this was the, um, this was the link. So this guy's had the same issue with the Stabista being at fault. It's it's a very strange little little uh, device. Let me just click into this picture and I'll show you where it is on the circuit. So this is coming from the IF strip down into the amplifier circuit. Um, and this strange little um, oh wrong wrong way, strange little thing. It sort of looks like a capacitor. It looks like a battery. It doesn't look like anything like a diode on the schematic. It's a very strange little thing. And uh, he's got it out there. So this is his Stabister. Now, I, I've sort of seen that device before somewhere. Whether I've got one or... I mean, it looks a little bit like a thermal fuse, doesn't it, as well? Maybe that's what I'm thinking. It looks a little bit like a thermal fuse, but um, definitely looks familiar. And uh, this chap's this chap's fix has been to stick a no, I can't zoom in, but he's popped. You can see we've got a 220 microfarad capacitor, and we've got an LED in circuit. Now the the idea is to get a a voltage drop of 1.5 volts at this point. So uh, the general consensus seems to be by using um, some diodes to do that. But we've got to try and get some at 1.5 volts. So I'm going to actually use diodes. I'm not going to use an, an LED. And the other issue he had was um, these capacitors in the amplifier circuit. So you know, this is a Stabister, and he's had to change six caps as well. And I think Geo did say that the caps could do with them being changed. So if we look at that other tab that I opened, this um, goes into a bit more um, detail. So if I, if I copy and paste that into the chat a minute, you can have a read along if you want to. Hi Luigi, how are you? Thanks dear, and we'll see you see you in an hour, mate. You can come and save us. Bias stabilization in class A B. So A few unusual elements to the design. This is a very good article, actually. I was uh, I read this through a couple times, and it's got thirteen transistors, five diodes, and a component called a stabister, a big nine by five inch loudspeaker. So that really does give it some oomph, doesn't it? In a little case.
So it's a single super heterodyne format. Mixer oscillator for long wave, medium wave, and short wave, and a separate tuner for VHF FM. It's a very similar to a lot of the other radios of the of the era. You know, the Hacker Sovereign, that's got exactly the same sort of setup. Although it didn't have shortwave, we'll see. But uh, the R707, that's got a separate tuner for FM. There's quite a few radios of that era that had separate AM tuners, AM FM tuners. Four transistor audio amp. Diode detector for AM, FM discriminator for FM. Um, common, AM, common IF strip, so that IF is used for AM and FM. This is a little bit strange. So AM mixer oscillator circuit. I don't think we can zoom in on these, but there's a wire loop on the printed circuit board that provides a shortwave band spread function. Very unusual. Uh, VHFM, IF tuner. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's get down, 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 down. Maintenance issue, stabister failure. So this is um, this is what we're looking at really. So it's listed as D501 on the circuit, and it's an unusual device that provides a 1.5 volt stabilized voltage used for the bias on the transistors in the RF and IF stages. Okay, so it's, it's for the bias on the RF and IF stages. Hmm, okay, I got that wrong then. So it says the stabistas are often reported as failing and leaving a white residue on the circuit board. Apparently this can harm the board, so you've got to clean it off. Solution for this, now this is, this is what I'm going to attempt to do. So uh, the solution that's reported is to stick a network of two silicon diodes and a germanium diode in series. Used in forward conduction mode, as each silicon diode gives a drop of 0.6 volts and the germanium one gives 0.3 volts, this equals 1.5 volts. And it's also suggested that a 220 electrolytic is placed across it to give good smoothing and ensure that no ripple or noise occurs on the line which might give instability. You can see the picture there of the stabister, and I don't know if I can open this in a new tab. I can, but will it let me zoom in a little bit? Let's see if we can zoom in on that one. So this is the stabister. It just looks like a capacitor I suppose if you didn't know you'd think that was an electrolytic with the plus and minus on it but it's got ST 1,5 written on the board so we need to take this out potentially and swap it in with a a capacitor and some diodes which I have got to hand and I have measured it out and it is 1.505 volts my little hash together Let's just get that back to 100 percent should we leave it some leave it out so da, 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 da. so it looks like they used that on the following so geo mentioned the tp43 i've not seen a tp43 to be honest but uh that was apparently the version that replaced this one. <clears throat> Output transform transistors failing. Output sounds fine at the moment, but although we have got... We could have whiskers on one, I suppose. That could be the issue. AM tuning control becomes stiff. Now, this one is fairly stiff, so we need to sort that out. So, yeah, the stabister... So again, I've, I've got it zoomed in so you can see it a bit better. Hopefully you can. It depends what sort of device you're watching on. I know you said listening on then. So yeah, this is the uh, 
this is the bit that we're going to be doing. Right, let's get back to um, this, and we're back. Back in the room. Right, let's get me chat back up. They turned the mystery of the Stabista into a movie, did they, Kevin? Very good. <laughs> yeah, so are you, mate? Five o'clock, meantime. How are you, Yaz? Andrew, little boy, how are you, Andrew? I've noticed that, Andrew. Yeah, Andrew's saying basically that a lot of companies used LEDs because they produce less noise than normal diodes. I didn't know that. Yes, they were into the tape market, Doug, definitely. Uh, so typical features of the TP4 is the AM condenser getting stuck and the coil and the speaker getting stuck. As I say, we have got a fairly stiff AM tuning gang, but um, I think a little drop of um, penetrating oil in there and then uh, followed with some very light oil should sort that. What's the input voltage to the new circuit? What's the input voltage to the new circuit? I'm not sure what you mean there, Auntie, but let me see if I can find a circuit diagram for it. We do, we do need a circuit up on screen. Um, let's see if I can find one. TP1. Hmm. I don't know where that's gone. No, I've not got a circuit of it to have. Let me see if I can find one. I know you chaps love the schematics. Electro Tanya have it. Looks like there's a place called audio, free audio service manuals that have it. So let's just stick that in the, um, in the chat link for you. So you go, uh, Anthony. For the news network you're going to use to drop to one volt. Yes, Gerald, I did. I did see that um, someone had used the an LED to drop the volt. The one point four five apparently with an LED. I just want to see if I can get a schematic up here. There it is. Open image in new tab. Then we need to somehow rotate it. How can we rotate this? More tools. That's actually quite good. Um, Schematic that. I 
I'll have to save it and open it in a different program. So I'll show you my um, diode setup in a minute. Okay, so if we open that, what's it going to open it in? Yes, there we go. Fit to screen. Let me just go to my screen then. Desktop capture. Uh, go here. No, it's not that one. It's this one. Now I need to zoom, zoom, zoom. Is this going to be, a, is it going to go good or is it going to be fuzzy? It's fuzzy, isn't it? That's a shame. I mean, the stabista is in here, but the diagram's just not, not good enough. It's not good enough. So we'll forget that. Oh, well, it looked good, but it wasn't. So let's see if we can get a better um, service manual. A schematic even. Radio museum, they got it, haven't they? They got everything. to find the <clears throat> that's some on the radio museum let's some um, let's get you in on the radio museum cracking um what's the word for it cracking resource so here's a tp41 now they're giving it as 1970 in norway Lineup of the transistors. It says the US model as the marine band in place of the long waves. So it's lost long wave and you've got marine band as well as short wave. That's quite good actually. So if you think about the state of a long wave at the moment with only radio four on it, probably the marine band is better. You know. Um Say anything more about oh, the, the main thing is it's got the schematic. Look, let's go to documents, schematics, mm -mm -mm. schematic one. Here we go. Okay, this looks a bit better. So, this is the IF strip up here. This is FM front end look. This is the IF strip. So this is this is actually producing the bias. So this, here's our stabista down here, look. So let's have a look. That's positive there, that's saying. So yeah, that is giving bias to the base of that transistor. Enter that transistor. Enter that one. Hmm. So it's picking up. It's picking that up from the amplifier rail or power rail, isn't it? So it's to give a stable voltage to the base of these transistors. Yeah, all, all of those transistors there are biased by that 
little device there. So you can see if this goes haywire, it's going to create chaos through the IF strip, isn't it? Which is then going to get amplified and all the sort of rubbish is going to come down here straight into the amplifier circuit and out, out your speaker. 3.2 ohm as well. It's unusual, isn't it? I thought it's 32 ohm to start with, but it's 3.2 ohm speaker. So this is this is the area we're going to be looking at now, I think. We've got the Stabister down here, D501. And we've also got some electrolytics. We've got this one here, 1000 microfarad. Got another thousand here. So we've got a thermistor of some description there. Quiescent current pot. Uh, midpoint voltage pot. Another electrolytic between these two stages. Another one down here. Okay, let's um let's get the thing apart, shall we? Let's get her apart. Right, let's catch up my chat a minute, because I think someone's just super chatted me, which is very kind of them. Hi, tune in. How you doing, Lee? Gavin, <laughs> from Mr. Stabister. Paul Crespo, hi, Paul. Five hour drive. Hell. Go and have a cup of Paul and come back. Wouldn't a voltage regulator replace a stabister? So Timothy's saying, not sure if it would be a good idea to decouple that with a small cap as well as a 220. Say 10 and have to prevent high frequency ripple. Good, good call, Timothy. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. We're in new territory here. People have experimented with this thing before, but... Um, you know, I'm not the expert on this by any means. I've never, ever seen one of these before. So let's get my, um, my Heath Robinson set up on camera here for you. Let me show you what, um, what I'm thinking of doing. This is, this is not my idea. This is, uh, this is basically doing what, what they're suggesting. So let's go to that. Make that a bit brighter. Auto focus and zoom in a bit. Right, let's get rid of me. This is what I'm proposing to do with that that way round in the middle. So this is the negative end, it's coming in around those diodes and back down again. Now, let me get a, a pointery thing. This diode and this one are one end four one four eights so they're silicon diodes around about a 0.6 volt drop across those and up here this is an oa90 so oa90 that one is so we've potentially got 0 0.6 0 0.6 and 0.3 should give us 1.5 volts and this is a 220 ohm electrolytic now this might be too big i don't know what size this stabister is we might need to go for a radio one 
But my my sort of idea is to attach these to the end of the the capacitor. These two. Then um, shorten this right down. So we've we've just got this like series diode chain going across it. So the thing is, is that a one point five volt drop? That is the question. Is it or in it? Is it or in it? So let's go. Oh, let's get to the right one. So let's pop this on diode mode. And I'm just going to go across these two. I'm going to bound to get these leads the wrong way around. A 50 50 chance. Oh, right first time. So there we are. Look, we've got 1.5 volt. Exactly, pretty much. So uh, I can't really argue with that. That's pretty, pretty good. So that's that's what I'm going to fit in this radio in place of the Stabister. Mr. Stabister. That is what I'm going to do. Whether that's going to work or not, who knows? As I say, it's all new to me. It's all new to me. Get that out of the way. So, what's your thoughts on on that kibosh? <laughs> Aston, how you doing? No, apparently it has failed, um, Matambly. Just had a look inside this radio and said it's definitely gone. So well, it's on its way anyway. Are the diodes the right way around? I think they are, Timothy. Yeah. How critical is the 1.5 volt value? Apparently, it is fairly critical. So I have I have selected diodes some um, because the fir the first um, attempt I had was about 1.6 1.7 volts. So that's why I changed to an OA90. I had an AA119 in there to start with, I think, and that was too much. So I have selected them to get to the 1.5, Doug. I mean, I assume that my diodes are the right, right white way wound. <laughs> white way wound. That's <laughs> the work. Stuff's gonna start. Stuff's gonna start cas cascading down if I start trying to draw things out. But um, I want to keep those real. I want to draw on that. I took my bit of drawing paper downstairs the other day, and what have we got here then? Let me just, I'll, this might be wrong, so you need to correct me if I am wrong. So let's um, just go to that. Let's get rid of me. So my plan Let's just draw this out. Let's just zoom back out a bit, a bit close in there. This is my diodes. So we've got one there. One there. One there. All joined up. Well, it would be if I could draw it. 
So that's that. And then across here, we've got my capacitor. That being positive and that being negative. So am I right? Is that correct or have I cocked it up? It's obviously a technical term. So this is positive and this is negative. No, the bottom one is positive. So I've got this the wrong way round, have I? Let me see if I can find a rubber. No, it's not a rubber. I can't find me rubber now. Let's draw it again. So Okay. Like a that, or if we get it the right way up, it's like that. So this is, let me just write these on, so that's a 1N4148, 1N4148, and an OA90. UF. So we're right now, now we're, now we're here, if we're with it. So we're actually that way round, like that. So what Timothy is suggesting is to put a lower value non-polarized cap just across here as well. So really to go a little bit further down here and just put a little 10 NF. In there, is that right, Tim? That was that's what you were saying. That might be better. The first one is correct. What? The first one is correct. What this one? Is it this one or this one? Now I'm confused. So what we're saying, because Derek is saying the voltage drop is when the diode is forward bias. Yeah, so I, th I was right the first time is what you're saying. <laughs> so I was correct to start with. Or, oh, no, I, this is the problem because the chat the chat is a little bit slow. 
Les is saying yes, because I, I drew this out yesterday and I was sure I had it the right way around, but then someone said it was wrong. So now someone's saying... <laughs> Les is saying yes, and Rich is saying no. Thomas is saying second. Okay, so on your screen, we have got two diagrams. We need to get this right because if people are watching this and they're going to do their own stabista, they need to make sure that um, we're not misleading them. So we need to be 100% sure that this is actually correct. So this is our two diagrams. Is it the left diagram that is right, i.e. this one, or is it this one? Which one is it? The second one, so this is <laughs> this is the right diagram, this is the left diagram. Is it the right or the left that's correct? We need to get this right. <laughs> I love it. This is brilliant. This is live, live TV at its best, isn't it? <laughs> but we're saying it's when it's reverse biased that we're getting the, the voltage, aren't we? So uh, Matambly wanted to um, So we're saying it's this one. This one here is right, yeah? This one Let's just catch up. Let's make sure we're, make sure we're all on the same page here. This is great stuff, isn't it? <laughs> It'll be Chris. It'll soon be Christmas, everybody. It'll soon be Christmas. <laughs> so the right hand one seems to be the favourite. Although I'm confused with what Les is saying. So I'm, I think Les is just saying yes to both of them. I think he's just saying yes to both of them, just to confuse me. <laughs> right. <laughs> what What's right? The tick is right? Why, why? Apparently the red LED would be a 1.45 drop, not a 1.5 drop, so it's a bit marginal. This gives us exactly the 1.5 that we need. This LED gives us. We'll, we'll test it. We'll try it. Let's get a red LED. Look. Let's pop. Let's pop out a red one. Look. I've got one to hand. Look at how. Look how. Um, look how organised I am. It's a phenomenal. I'll, okay, Matamoli, I'll get the diagram back up for you in a second. Let's just quickly look at this um, this LED that I've got on the bench. Chuck it in diode mode. Let's see what the drop across this is, because we're looking for 1.5. So a 50-50 chance of getting it, getting it the right way around, and I got it wrong. To be fair, that ain't far off, is it? 1.52. Now, whoever was it was was testing it last time. I mean, that is lighting it, I suppose. So whether that's causing a issue, but that's not far off the diode, is it? I, I prefer I prefer the diode method rather than having an LED inside. I don't know. So let's um. Let's look at the diode then. So the diode. This is the, the LED, sorry. 
So if we've drawn it with the LED, obviously the, um, I'm not sure on the LED. I know that the longer leg is positive. So if we've got the LED, are we going So this is the positive and this is the negative lead of the LED. Then we're going across with our capacitor. Are we going that way? With that as a positive and that as a negative? Or, oh, hang on, I've gone. The, I've, I've done it, both positive. Are we, are we like that? with the LED. So this is, this is the LED method then. So Jir uh, has used the three LED version before and it works great. Yeah, I, I did show it just now, Gerard, on that um, on that uh, previous one that someone has used it to good effect. If you look at this um, this diagram that we looked at just now, I'm not sure if this was after, before you joined, um, Gerard. Let me go to there and we'll go to my screen and then we'll go to there. So if you look at this, um, no, get back. Let's see if I can go in a bit closer. No, wrong way. So this is positive here. So you can see the positive of the cap is going to this side and the negative of the capacitor is going here. This is a 220. You can see the red LED there. I mean, my, my personal thing, well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the um, three diode package, really. It seems to be the preferred method, but it might not be the right one. But if it works, it works. If it don't, then, um, you know. So that's that's the idea with the die. Now, is that the correct way around? Or, or has this got to be reverse biased as well? You know, have I got to have that this way around? I mean, we can. it's not going to go bang, is it? It's not going to go bang, I don't think. Right, let's get some, um, let's just get the circuit back up that um, Joe wanted to see a minute. Let's see if we can go back to that. Joe wanted to have a look just to see how it was in the circuit. So let's go back to there. Hang on, Where, uh, there we are. There we are. So you can see that this has got the positive here. So this is the positive rail, which is providing the bias voltage for, and it's saying 1.4 volts look, on all of those. So that's got to be positive and that's negative. So this must be the negative rail here. Let's just go across and make doubly sure. Uh, what it's showing is <laughs> positive both ends according to that schematic. But yeah, that, that is the negative rail by the looks of it, isn't it? So this is a negative rail coming along here. And that's the stabister. The infamous stabister. Positive this side to the resistor, negative this side. We haven't even got the case off the thing yet. <laughs> Jesus. We'll get there. We'll get there. Don't panic. 
Right, let's get the main camera going. Let's get back to that one. Right, let's get me chat back up. Oh God, I need another beer after that lot, after that session then. <laughs> right, okay. Left is not right, right. Don't start, Ben. I'm already confused. I'm easily confused and even easier led. <laughs> Three diodes, not LEDs. Whew. Ford biased. It's not operating as a Zener in avalanche mode. I think we'll try both to compare. LED would be less fussy. No worries, Ger Gerard. No worries, mate. Good, good to have your input, though. LEDs work forward biased. Anode towards the rail. Need more coffee. I need more beer. Right, I'm going to have to go loo. I'm going to go tut loo, and then I'm going to have another beer, and we're going to get this thing apart and have a look at this mystery stabister. Why isn't anyone making stabisters so as we can fit the, fix these radios? Surely somebody in China can be watching this and say, ah, we need to remanufacture a stabister so Graham can fix his Tanbergs. <laughs> right, I'll be back. Right, Stabister Man is coming back. <clears throat> I suppose you could. You could package up a... I mean, it doesn't need to be a very high voltage um, capacitor, really, does it? If we're only looking at 1.5 volts, we could stick a 6.3 volt capacitor in. You know, a three diode package and um, shrink wrap it up and call it a Stabister, couldn't we? The mystery. This is spelt to Lou. <laughs> Hi, David. How are you? Right. Let's um. Let's get back on it then. Let's get back on. It. Let's let's get this thing apart. Let's have a look inside and let's find this stabister. So we got two. We got the two options there. We can try both. I mean, end of the day, it's easy enough for me to just snip the wires and and um, put one or the other in. So what have we got here? Is this Philips or is it looks? Okay, so yeah, it is actually Posi Drive, not Philips. So that's one screw out. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. It's great camera work, Graham. Come on, sort yourself out. So I've just undone that one, and it is um, it does look to be Posi Drive, not Philips. Somewhere I've got a pot. So we've got a lock washer. It looks like that plastic bit's captive in the handle.
Oh, thank you, Gia. Thank you very much. Let's say that schematic is not great. The one that I'm looking at is better than some of them. But the, the schematic that Gia sent me was absolutely brilliant. I mean, this this is um, what Gia sent me. I mean, this is really, really good quality. Very, very good. Let's get that lock washer out of there. Because it's better to pop out when you don't want it to. Okay, it looks like there's a insert with a little bronze washer in there by the looks of it. Copper, bronze, copper. I think these come out and push down. That's easy enough. Let's do the other one. So angles outwards, pushes down. That's a little bit in the way there, that one. Let's just try the other side first then. So slide out of there. Okay. Very nice construction. I mean, God, they make know that to make their furniture, don't they? Yeah, very nice. That's one half. Look at the size of that speaker. That's a monster speaker. Have got a crack there? Is that just a little crease? Why don't you just stabilise that with a bit of PVA? That's a huge speaker. Right, let's have a look at this other half of the case. This has got to sort of angle up. There we go. Look at the foam. Foam, foam in, foam in. We've got a label that's just dropped off, it says FM OSC. I don't know where that's come from. I can see the, the sneaky stabister. Let's pop this speaker out. So it looks like there's four screws. Two have got screw holes in them, one hasn't. But I suspect they're all metric. Shall we go for five mil? Smaller. 4.5. No, okay. So it looks like five mil is the closest, but not exact. A little bit of play, it's not imperial, is it? Hmm. Yeah, imperial fits better. So it looks like the two ones with a screwdriver head are on the bottom. Pop my solder iron on because we're going to need to pop the The speaker wires off. That's a monster speaker, isn't it? Look at the size of it. No wonder it sounds so good. Okay. The speaker's on two wires at the back, and we've got 
well they're both black so it doesn't matter which way around they are just pulling them off one cool that's tight that's tight that is very tight I do not want to be thumbing this speaker watch me Doug yeah that's very tight why is that one so tight then He's out, he's out. Whew. Let's put that one very, very safely over to one side. So that's a Telefunken speaker, look. Oh no, Tandberg. It's got Tandberg audio on it. I thought it was Telefunken then. It seems to have metallic paint on it, look. What's all that? Hmm. That's a big speaker. I mean, um, Hacker are renowned for their speaker size. But have I got a Hacker speaker to hand? I say Hacker, so I mean I'm going to talk about one of the higher end Hackers with a decent sized speaker in it. Just to compare. I had a speaker there for ages, but it's gone now, isn't it? It would do, because I need it. <laughs> There's definitely gremlins at work in this place, I can tell you. Oh, well, I was hoping to compare it like for like with a hacker speaker, but for some reason, I seem to have mislaid it. We can certainly see a hacker speaker in, in there, and that is bigger than a hacker speaker. This is a um, hacker Herald, which has got the same size speaker as the Sovereign, Sovereign 2, and that is a bigger speaker. Look at that. Yeah, who would have known? If you compare it to an R707, for all you Roberts fans, well, actually, this is an R600, but you know, you can see the, the difference in size. R707 is slightly deeper, but the same, same length. Yeah, that's a big speaker, a beauty. Right, I need to put that well out of my way. Let's put that right over there, out of the way. Welcome back, Rob. Let's catch up on my chat a minute. Three sixteenth. I mean, that was a six BA um, that I used. Gear. GTGF. Afternoon, mate. You have some 2.7s, Danish? Penguin's got it, yeah, he probably has. Right, okay, let's, um, I can see, I've seen the Stabister, I've seen the light, and it definitely has had it. This is uh, going to be a better picture than you've seen so far on one of these, I believe. Let's get that light in. Ooh. 
Let's get the overheader in. Let's get a good old close up look at the Stabister. The now infamous Stabister. There he is. Center of shot. Sammy the Stabister. Okay, so you can see on this side it's green, so it's been leaking. And it is marked positive down there on the board, look, just, just behind that green wire. So that, that is the positive side and this is the negative. Remove the battery compartment by removing two screws at the bottom of it. Let's have a look at that then. I take it we mean these these two here. long very good so that's our little strap for the side cheek as well there and there bit of an unusual battery situation going on green gunk on a component is never good Thanks for this, Jir. So I'm going to take the battery compartment off. Compartment. Tongue tied. Positive. Negative over here. Gives us a bit more room. Thanks for that tip, Jir. Might make it a bit easier to see that as well now. So yeah, what a strange thing. So we also need to, well that, that looks loose straight away. I think we've got a dry joint on that one. That could be our, that could be our loose connection. This one here, just out of shot alert, this one. That could be our intermittent connection. So let's uh, just flip the board. Oh, no, maybe not. Oh, oh, that doesn't look good. Will it focus that close? Yeah. 
What is that? That's, I think, that's a bit, a bit too close, but uh, let's just come, come out a little bit. And look, we've got two, we've got another dry, we've got a dry joint there, which is that, that capacitor. <laughs> the stabister is eating away the board. There. So we've got a dry joint there. One there. Where's that other? Was that that cap? Yeah, that was the one I was wiggling. Yeah, so that's that's why when I'm tapping it, it's coming back to life. So it's that one there, and we've got issues with the stabister. Oh dear. Right. But that's not some, um, not the end of the world. That's the other one there that's got a dry joint. Right, I wonder how much um how much board damage we got underneath this. I wonder what's in that stabista then. There must be something. It doesn't look like electrolyte damage, does it? <sighs> Wish we have a scrape at this. Let's get the old scalpel in. Let's get my eyes on. We'll have a good old scrape. Stabista plague. <laughs> Is the ferrite cracked? I'm not sure. We'll have a look in a minute. Let's just get um, get my eyes on. I'm going to go in and have a look at this a minute. See what, see whether we've got a broken trace here. We can't have a broken trace because it wouldn't have worked at all without bias, would it? scrape back as far as the damage goes then we can put some more soda mask on it after so make sure we haven't got any break in the track in there I think possibly was it just corrosion still I 
the stabisters definitely have it though. Let's just get rid of that some um, solder around that. So it's a bit glary there, isn't it? There you go, that's a bit better. It's a semi cut conductor silicon diode. It can't be silicon though, can it? Million chip. There's lots of lots of stabister. <laughs> but this this is the pin of the stabister, I'm sure it is. Yeah, so that is definitely that is definitely there. That is definitely what's loose, and this is the other one that's loose. So let's um, just remove that. Well, if it, it's not even going to take solder, it's all gone crusty and crystallized. It's not even going <laughs> to... Solder and I had no effect on that. It's going to pull that out a minute. So another bit of a scrapey scrape. Let's get the old fiberglass, fiberglass, fiberglass brush. I'm even another beer yet. Yeah? It's a bit cruddy, isn't it? I don't know whether it's alkaline or acidic, really. What we don't want to do is seal it in underneath some new soda mask. I think it's actually corroded right away there. Yeah, that's barely any copper left there. It's all corrosion. Mm, it's not looking good. What we're going to do here then? So on it. Yeah, 
Yes, hanging on by a thread, that trace. So I think I'm going to have to... What should I do? Should I cut a piece of copper? It's quite badly corroded, and I'm just going to put the dirty bit back on it again. It's quite badly corroded there, isn't it? Copper wire and a lake of solder. <laughs> I'm going to stick a bit of that copper tape back on it. Be enough got it some to hand from last week. So we've still got quite a bit of corrosion on here. So we want to make this a permanent repair, we don't want to just botch it up. That's why I'm being extra finicky, but that's what I do, isn't it? It's the way I roll. <laughs> yeah, I don't know whether there's a, not a break there as well. <clears throat> what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to stick some flux down on it, I'm going to tin that piece of the board. So I've moved off the camera there, am I? I'm going to tin that piece of the board. And see what it comes up like. And then I'm going to put some copper tape over the top. Wire wrapping is a wonderful bit of support for solder. Bridget. Valdir. Boatarde. <laughs> What's Boa Torde about here? How you doing, mate? If a stabista had cap in it, it could be electrolytic chemical causing corrosion. We might try cutting one in half. What do you think? So I'm going to um, I'm going to tin this to start with. I'm going to tin the whole area, then I'm going to wick it off, so we've got like a layer of... A layer of solder over it. I'll do that as well, as well. So we can see where we're missing. I will say I'll wick it off and then... Um... See where we are. Yes, yeah, I'm not convinced of that connection there either. I'm 
looks alright up there now, but that doesn't look good there. It looks like right pigs here at the moment, doesn't it? So it's actually worse than it looked. <laughs> it looked pretty bad as it was. So basically where the soda hasn't taken, we've still got a bit of corrosion. And where the gaps are, there are gaps. get some tape. I'm already speaking Portuguese. That's easy for me, Valdir. Boa tarde. Yeah, boa tarde. Is that a good afternoon? <laughs> There's got to be something like that. <laughs> right, let's find me tape. So this is me, um, me tape, me tape. Um, how's best to do this? Am I going to try and cut this to the size? Am I going to do a paper template and then somehow miraculously attempt to match it up? I think I am. Right, so that's a, f it's not a straight line, is it? It's never going to be a straight line. This is like, we're, we're getting into um, Blue Peter territory now. We're getting into Blue Peter territory now. S sticky bit of plastic will be coming next. Totally the wrong way, Graham. What are you thinking? So if we go there as our edge, and then we've got to Come up here further. Touch that, okay.
Yeah, this is going to be finicky to try and do this with tape, to be fair, because I've got some really thin track there. But I've got to bridge that bit, and I've got to bridge that bit. So then that comes in sort of like that. Bit of art going on here now, bit of craft work. Can't get my fingers underneath it now, even. So it's sort of, where's the hole? Hole is there, okay. No, this is a pig's ear. <laughs> I'm getting there. I am getting there. So I need to take that off. Sort of there, really. Okay, yeah, we're getting there. Need to come out of here a bit. It's only a little tiny piece. I mean, I could just blob loads of solder and wire over it, I suppose, but that's going to look shocking. Want to make it look like it's a proper job, don't we? Oh, he's botching up stuff. This is a little tiny bit of copper, it really is. Mm. We might have to do a bit of both here, a bit of wire and a bit of copper, I don't know, might be able to do it. So I'll thin that down and just come out with that a bit further. What we don't want to be doing is doing very fine work on the copper foil because that will be non impossible to get away with. Oh, damn. Okay. Right, well that bit of paper fits. I don't know if you can see that. That bit of paper fits, so roughly well, that's the sort of shape that I want the copper to be. Now 
And whether I can actually get that onto the copper or not, I don't know, but we'll try, shall we? Dwayne, how are you, mate? Good to see you. Thank you, Ben and Sandra. All the old foam needs to replace. The two pieces of foam on the speaker too. Yeah, this is um, this is had it, but I'll have to I'll have to do a bit of jiggery pokery on that. I've got some other tape that might do it. So we need to get this onto the um, tape. This is San Hayato tape. See, Japanese as well. There's no stopping me. So I can't this tape off. Yeah, I'm at it, Dwayne. You know me. Just can't leave it alone. Just doing a bit of a board repair here. I could just do a botch up with some braid or something, I suppose. But let's just stick a bit of copper in because I've got it, you know? If I've got it, let's use it. Right, that's the... Um, that's plenty... Let's pop that back off, let's pinch that, stick that on there. See if I can draw around that with the scalpel a minute. See, I actually don't really need to come up here because I've got a good solder edge on here. So I need, I don't really want to try drilling a hole in the new copper because that's just going to make it gather. So I could probably just go across and down there with it, but... So I've roughly drawn the shape on my bit of copper now. I can just see that. I'm going to try and cut that out. The little marks are just um, just where I pressed with the tweezers. That's all.
does that look like? Need another pair of tweezers. there it's gonna come off of there There. Come on, get off. The sharpest scalpel on the planet is coming on here. little bit close there can we see that yeah you can see that it's a little bit close just there Better. Right. Let's see if we can get some sort of connection on here. It's not taken, is that down there very well? I think that's it. What do you think? What do you think?
concrete. <laughs> oh, let's just get rid of that blob just there. Let's make sure we've got continuity down through there. I'm going to use ohms, not beeper, because we want to make sure that um, we haven't just got continuity, we've got good resistance. Let's go from there to 0.65. So just going to zero this out. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Let's do, well, I'm going to do that capacitor, aren't we? Let's, we're going to change that one anyway. So I'm not too worried about that one for a minute. Let's just um, solder that one back on. Sure, that's not still dry jointed. No, so that one's fine. So what we need to do now is get some solder mask on that, and I'm going to use the green nasty because it's quicker. Um, and that'll help keep it down on the board as well, because obviously we're not fully soldered to the board as such. This will just basically stop the solder running everywhere, I suppose. Nasty stuff. Oh, what was that? I'm just twanging now. So I'm just going to use some UV Cure solder mask. We need to definitely make sure we've got these tracks covered. We don't want them. Bridge in. And up here. So this will help keep that bit of copper stuck down as well. We want to leave a pad for the capacitor to take there. <laughs> can you hear Maddie down? I don't know if you can hear her down there or not. Let's go down in there as well, I think. A bit of copper showing there, just 
Touch that in as well. Right, UV light time. And a bit of hot air. I think these are two totally different um, UV lights, these. Stay there. It's giving it a bit of heat as well. Speeds it up apparently. It's on the lowest set in 100 degrees. Let's just prop that up a minute. Just going to leave those propped on it for a minute. Let them go off. Drink beer. Yes. <laughs> Let's get rid of the Abbott and let's bring up um, the champion. It's one of my all time favorite beers. Can't be the drop of champion. Let me just get this poured out and I'll catch up with the chat. Just leave that going off for a minute. So the solder mask I used is this, this stuff here. This is some um, mechanic brand. I got it from China. In fact, no, I don't, I, I didn't. I got it from eBay, I believe. So it's a mechanic green UV UV cure, it comes with that little light. You actually get it with, with a light as well. Not, not the big one, I bought that separate. That's a rechargeable one. This one here works on coin cells, but works, works fine. So let's catch up. Cheers, Chris. Thanks all. Looks factory. <laughs> I would say that. 11 out of 10, Harvey. Thank you very much. Cheers, Thomas. Cheers, you. A plus in art class. <laughs> Could be Ken. I did, get, I did get A plus in photography. The Starship taking off tomorrow. Where's that going from then? Is that coming, going from Nuki again, um, Rich? <laughs> Slap some nail varnish on it. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
Yeah, she's mad. Mad Maddy. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> Cheers, Rob. Hi, Ganesh. How are you? Right, there we go. I'm up. I'm caught up with a chat, I think. Apologies if I've missed anybody. Right, let's have a look to see what that's like. Don't cross the beams. What film's that from? Still a little bit there. Do so a little bit more curage just there. Oh, damn. So definitely need to get this off. And the other thing that you can find sometimes, you can see this strip of tape here. If I zoom you in a bit, without getting you in the light, this strip of tape here needs to be changed. But what you can find sometimes, and I've had this more than once, is the glue actually eats away at the board. Um, now this is quite fine foam, so I'm not gonna change it immediately. The only way of doing that is to cut another piece and just shave it. That's the only way. You're a boxer, a tablet. Yeah, we could, well, you've seen my two dogs on, on the, um, on the, what should we call it? Well, you've got a fox instead, Benji. Yeah, you've seen my two on the trailer. Yeah, Ghost Cruncher, <laughs> Crunch Busters. <laughs> I don't remember, this is a three pusher, this one. Three satins, right, okay. Let's have a look then. Yeah, that ain't going anywhere, is it? Right, okay, we've done we've done the board repair. We've done that capacitor there. So we now need to get this stabister done. The stabister. The awkward Mr. Stabister. I'm trying to think the best way to get you in here, probably sort of a bit of a jaunty angle like that, really. Stabister. Snow at Christmas, yes, yeah. Yeah, cheers, dear. I haven't got any, anybody know of a source of that foam? I've got some, some foam here, but it's a bit thick, really. I can cut it down to suit, so it's not a major issue, but. Right, stabister time. So we can see that that's definitely the positive there. It's marked positive on the board. I'm sure you can see it if I go down a bit closer. Yeah, that's, that's, everything's in the way, but um, just under that black wire there, I can move that out of the way. 
So you can see we've definitely got a positive marked on the board down there. So this was was the leg of the Stabista, the, the one that's got gunk all over the board and nearly ruined it. <clears throat> so take it off our capacitor, it's got to go that way, hasn't it? I'm going to need to come back to the main camera because you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing here because I'm just up too, up way too close really. And it's going to be easier for me to work this way around. So the other side of the Stabista is just up here. So let's get that out. Mr. Stabista. It's good that you guys haven't come across this before either. I mean, obviously, Jir has worked on these and he's done the fix with the diodes, which works fine. And that's our Stabista. Let's get the overhead camera going on that. Let's have a look. I do need a microscope, really, that I can get on, on camera. Yuck. Let's zoom out a little bit and let's see if I can cut that off. This is probably not good for my hands at all. So it says stabil. Thing is, if I if I hit it with isopropyl, it'll probably get rid of all that writing. So it's got a manufacturer's mark on it. Stabil. Stability, stability something, stability, stability no mates. So it's definitely, something's definitely leaked out of that end, look. I mean, there must be some electrolyte in there. There must be for it to go green and, and damage the board like that. Trying to see what that manufacturer's mark is. Could be Tanberg, but it doesn't look like it. Let's try a bit of isopropyl. Now that we've seen as much as we can off of it. Is that disappearing before our very eyes? It looks like something like one, two. 12D stability stability or something. Yeah, the isopropyl is is knocking off. It's almost like a mullard badge. It also looks like the isopropyl is um dissolving that green stuff, which would mean it's potentially... Mm. Is it acid, I wonder? Let's put a little bit of vinegar on it and see what happens. Let's put a bit of vinegar on it and see if it fizzes. If it fizzes, it's alkaline. Like a battery. No, it's not fizzing, so it's it's acid, not alkaline. So that would say it's electrolyte 
rather than sort of like a battery fluid. Mmm. I've got a stinking bench now. <laughs> Well, there it was. So let's zoom it back out a little bit. Let's get back out. Oh, that's making my finger sting, isn't it? Or is that just the vinegar? Oof. Right, I think I'd best go wash my hands a minute because that's making my fingers sting. But it could, it could be the vinegar. So how does that compare size-wise? That's pretty good size-wise. Let's go wash my hands a minute. See, that's quite corrosive, that stuff. Well, we've seen what it did to the board. Yeah. Shouldn't you use gloves with that, really, shouldn't you, Graham? Silly man. pretty much exactly the same size as that capacitor so I've actually dropped the other components here there we are let me have a bit of a clean up a minute let's have a bit of a clean up Put it on the peat tester. Yeah, that's a good idea. Good idea, Rich. You never know. It might um, it might come up with something. Do you think it'll say Stabister? <laughs> Stabister. I'm not touching it again because that's some um, nasty. So look, it's actually reading as a 1.5 volt Zener diode. Reverse voltage 1.552, forward voltage 0.592. That's a forward voltage drop, isn't it? There you are. Hopefully you can see that. So really that one, although it's leaking, is probably still working. Well, the circuit was working, wasn't it? Amazing. <laughs> I 
Red Dwarf. I was never a fan of Red Dwarf, really. We had Blake 7 as well, didn't we? I wasn't a fan of that. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that either. So I quite like Tim's idea of going um, going across with a another one, another capacitor to knock out the higher frequencies. It's almost like we're trying to imp improve it, Tim Timothy, isn't it? Barista time for coffee. Clean it up and stick it back in, yeah. Yeah, we'll put the replacement on the peak. That's not a problem. We're just having a bit of a clean up in here. Uh, an en masse clean up. So if anyone's got a TP41 that needs a new Stabista, I've got one here that's um, that's perfectly serviceable. Guaranteed to rot your board out in a week. But apart from that, it's fine. <laughs> so what we'll need to do here, I want to try and get this neat as I can. I'm going to use use the three diode method so what i'm going to try and do is um i've got to get this the right way around don't i so we said that the second diagram was the correct one we think so that's with the negative there to that one. So, so I'm going to try and solder them in as tight as I can just to make it look a bit neater. It's going to look a bit of a pig's ear, but not that we've got anything against pig's ears as such. So I'm going to sort of build this up as we go. But before I connect the other end, we'll just test the diodes. So that's that diode on. Ow. I wonder whether I should put the diodes in some heat shrink or whether I should just leave them there as a tree to show what they actually are. So that's that's where we are so far. We've got one diode tacked upright. So we've got the red stripe going to sorry the stripe going to the negative. So how are you going to do this, Graham? You're just going to wind it around like that. It's like a little animal coming to you. It's like one of Paul's creations. Paul. <laughs> Let's join that one there. <laughs> 
Santosh, good afternoon, how are you? So that's got to basically be about there. No, nope. too tight, too tight. Better. So it's our little tree emerging. Let's make it neater. Let's make it prettier. So let's just test that now. I'm not going to connect it to the capacitor because that'll mess up the test. So let's um, let's see what it says on here then. So it says forward voltage 1.9. Says it's an LED, hey? What's going on with that then? tell you what we didn't do okay that's a component tester let's let's go back to the i don't know what that component tester does but it doesn't seem to measure the same as the multimeter let's just try this again with the multimeter a minute so stabista first on diode mode Other way. Point five that way. Is it measuring both ways? Okay, so it's sort of you can see it's moving all over the shop, but it's it's gaining. It's almost like it's charging up. What is going on there then? Let's look at our new um, device. Nothing that way conductance. 1.49 and this one is 1.49 it could well be junior It seems to be charging and discharging it like a capacitor. So that's, that's one way around. Let's see the voltage just climbing. It's like a capacitor, isn't it? Let's go the other way. Huh. 
How bizarre is that? It's like a capacitor. What is going on there? Anyway. Let's connect up the capacitor leg. Now, are we sure that this is, this is the right way according to our amended diagram? Okay, let's get this underneath the um, overhead camera and you'll see what I've done and see if you think it's right. So this is the diagram we've gone with and that's what we've turned out with. That way. That's right, okay. So this is what we've got. So this is our 220 microfarad cap here. Positive side against the, let's just go in right up close. So we agreed that that's our 220. And that's our diode in the correct orientation there. That's our OA90, that direction. And that's our 1N4148. Facing that way. So I think we're good. Let me just straighten that up a little bit. Now I'm thinking with um, Timothy's suggestion with the other cap, I can actually tack that across the underside of the board rather than complicate this even further. I can actually tack it on the underside of the board, that 10 NF. Yeah, so what I was thinking um, with the 10 NF was to um, stick that on the underside of the board. Because basically that's our two connections there. So that's where my cap's going to be coming up. And I was just thinking I could stick the decoupling, the other cap, across there. What, what's your thoughts, then? So we've got to get this the right way round in the circuit here. Mr. Stabister, we're down here where this green wire is. Get the light altered a little bit so you can see a bit better. Now I've re I've really made that hellish complicated, am I? By all the messing about I've done, but 
If anybody's not sure, then they can follow this video back at a later date, can't they? If it works. If it doesn't work, then don't follow it. Because it ain't no good. Be careful there, because I'm taking the solder, the stencil off the board with the isopropyl, so I don't want to do that. So we know that's got to be the positive end there. That's the negative end there. So I think I'm going to put a couple little bits of um, insulation on the legs. We did have it before, so let's do it again. If I can find my snips, there they are. If I can find the end of the stuff, which is there. It's gone all up at the legs of it. Okay. Yeah, because we've got an adjustment pot there, so I want to make sure that I can bend the legs away from it to clear that. I would have liked to have heat shrunk that really as well, but I'll go down a bit lower than that. Let's cut them off a bit shorter. This is wrong. Mr. Laser Sound. What are you doing? Stop, it's wrong. Why is, why is it wrong, Rich? What have I done? Are you, I mean, are you saying that I've got it the wrong way around? So the positive of the cap doesn't go to the positive it's got to, isn't it? Otherwise it's going to be sticking the voltage up the um, capacitor the wrong way. Surely. Surely I've got to have that. You still put the 10 and F. So the black bar of the diodes should go to the battery, the other end to R501. The negative side of the cap goes to the plus sign on the PCB. Okay, Rich. Ah. I don't think, I don't think so, Rich. I don't think so. Let me just get that other picture back up. Um, so if you look at this picture here with somebody that's actually done one with the um, LED, Rich, let me just get a screen. Desktop capture, there we go, there. So this is the positive, and you can see this is a radial cap, but you can see the negative band is here. So that capacitor they put in the correct orientation, they've put the positive to this side where the positive is 
and the negative to this side. So this is this is the negative rail and this is the positive here going up to the, for the bias. So I'm not, I'm not sure Rich I I don't know. I would say that I was putting it in the right way round but Bob how you doing mate? Yeah, get in there, Mike, I think. Shallow kill, we see. Rolf, how you doing, mate? So, you know, this is negative, so surely the negative side of the cap's got to go to the ground and the positive side going up to here. But are we saying that I had the, res the transistors the correct way around the first time, the, the diodes, I mean? Rich, tell me Rich. Rich, where have you gone? Help. What have I done? Yes, what do you mean yes, Les? Yes to what? Yes to what? I mean, this cap here is definitely the right way round, according to the circuit. The positive is positive, and the negative is negative. Whether this LED is the other way round, I don't know. So it makes me wonder whether I had it right the first time. I don't know. There was controversy. I mean, what's going to happen if I got this the wrong way around? Is anything going to go bang? Am I going to damage anything or is it just not going to work? This is the question. Just to add more information than just yes, Les. Because I don't know what you're going on about. What are, what are we doing? Where are we? Where's my main main camera gone? There we are. So that cap has got to go that way round. But are we saying the diodes are the wrong way round now? Because basically the the diodes are on the the negative side of the diode is on the on the positive side of the capacitor. Yeah. Yes. I'm soldering it in. I'm gonna I'm gonna try it. I mean what's the worst thing that could happen? What's the worst that could happen? I think the worst that could happen is it just not work. And then we know that we've got the diodes the wrong way round. But I think the cap's the right way round. What's wrong, Les? What's wrong? You said yes, no, it's wrong. It's going in, it's going in, Rocco. It's going in. I can't take it. I can't take it. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> I cannot take it. She's breaking up.
She's breaking up. I mustn't do Scottish accents because I'm rubbish at those as well. Yeah, well, I could take the transistors out. I've got replacements. Right, let's get me eyes in here. So this is my new piece of board. So I need to make sure I've got this um, soldered up nicely. Right. The the cruncher cruncher sisters in the crunch sister. Oh, hang on, we got a wire off. Oh, it's a speaker. I think no, that's a battery. <laughs> so that's the crunch sister. Right. Now, somewhere here, I had a four ohm test speaker that we can hash into here to give it a go. That's a boom. So we're going to put the Roberts R600 speaker in. It's a real head scratcher, isn't it, really? Really is. Really is. Right, power's in, speaker's on. Place your bets, everybody, because I'm going toilet again. <laughs> the, the tension. Oh, something smells nice downstairs. Mrs. Crunch is cooking up a storm again. Right, quick uh, toilet break, and we're back in action.
Right. Let's see. We should have got the intermittent issue sorted anyway. That's one thing. may go bang magic smoke diodes diodes the wrong way round les is saying what oh so let's make sure that the volume is turned down let's pop the power on set the current limit right down Let's pop it on. Okay, it's drawing 20. We have no signal though. So is less right? Are the diodes the wrong one way wound? There's a pop from the speaker, so that indicates the amplifier is working, but no sound. Okay. Um, let's get the multimeter. Let's have a look to see what the voltages are on that capacitor then. So that should be negative and that should be positive. So we're only showing... Yeah, so if we go the other way... Okay, so according to that, the that's the right way round. Okay. So, Les is saying that the diodes are the wrong way round. So let's disconnect the power again. It's definitely not working at the moment. I can't hear anything. There's no no um, no audio getting through. No worries, Les. <laughs> Appreciate your help, though. You know damn sight more than I do. Right, how are we going to do this then, Graham? now that you've done them so neatly? I suppose what we could try a minute is we could mess around with the LED, couldn't we? Now, where did I put that? Because I can physically hold the LED on there and see if we get any any action. Well, let's get another one. So let's first of all see if that does anything. No. So let's go with that. No audio that way and it's not lit. So let's try it that way. And it's not lit that way either. What? What is going on here? Okay, so I've got it on FM. Let's try it medium wave then because I've got no aerial con Oh, I have got aerial connected. No, so I should have got FM. So 
So let's just try the voltage with no diodes in. Don't seem to have anything, people. I've got to swap the capacitor around as well, Les. What? I'm really confused now, Les. I'm really confused now, so... We did have a working radio, it was great. No, we haven't. <laughs> oh dear. I've got 0 0.008 volts. The correct way round. If I reverse it, I've got a negative 0 0.0078.8. Check the LED. We think the LED's wrong. Dead LED, you think? There's definitely an LED. See, I'm really unsure what I'm doing wrong here now, unless there's a problem with the um, board. Oh, we've got a broken ferrite. I can see that. It's a shame. Okay, I'm wondering whether we've got another issue here, you know, because I know what we're saying, that potentially it's all wrong. <laughs> check the PSU, check voltages. Take out Graham, take out Graham. Put the positive of the diode to the positive on the board. No, I'm not sure what you mean by take out, Graham. I understand what you're, you mean by the positive to the positive. I can do that, Les. I'm doing that with the LED is what, what I'm trying to say to you. I'm just doing that with the LED by holding the LED over it and it ain't doing it. It ain't playing ball, Les. I'm just wondering if this green wire has got something to do with it here. Nope. So what I'm what I'm trying to say, Les, is I'm 
I've disconnected the LED, the sorry, the the diode altogether. And I've put an LED in place of it, which has got the correct drop, but it's still not um, not good. So we go that way. Nothing. Now, if we go what Les says and do the positive to the positive. Still not getting anything. No audio. Now, why are we getting no audio? It's drawing 20 milliamps, so we've definitely got amplifier current. Oh, hello. Who's ringing me now? Les is ringing me. Les! What's he saying, boy? What's he saying? Hello? Take what out of circuit, Les? <laughs> I know I'm right, I don't want to say forget it, but you've got the diodes in the wrong way round. The forward flow of the diodes got to go from the negative to the positive. So the positive on the board is where the positive end of the diode should go. The striped end, Les. The striped end. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying the striped end of the diode is the positive. Yeah, okay. So by putting by putting the positive positive Yeah. I had that. I had that less. Less less less. Stop, stop, stop. I'm saying I had I just done that. So you send the capacitors the wrong way around in the board. No, ig ignore the ignore the diodes for a minute, Les. I'm all about the capacitor. Now, does the capacitor does that have to go? That's correct. Yeah, I've done that. It doesn't work. Yeah, I've done that, Les. It doesn't it doesn't work. Les, 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 stop, stop. I've done that, it doesn't work. I've done it, it doesn't work. I've just swapped it around. You saw me do it. Yeah. can do that. Right. So Okay. Hi Les. Yeah, no, I have tried that, but um that's no, not confusing. I have done that, but we're good we'll do it again. 
Oi, Les. No, there's, the right there's no voltages there anywhere, for some reason. So, I'm still on it, Les. No. I haven't tested it to ground, though, to be fair. I haven't tested it to ground yet. Let me take this cap out, Les, and um, we'll, we'll, re we'll rejoin the chat. No worries. I, I did I did try it both ways, Les. I did try it both ways and neither way worked. Alright, okay, Grant. Sorry, 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 this capacitor back out in a minute. And the reason for that is I'm just going to try the diodes in on their own. Because I'm wondering whether this capacitor is... I mean, it, it's there's something else wrong. I'm doing something else wrong. I don't think what I've done here is wrong. Something else has happened that's stopping it working. And I don't know what yet. That's what I'm working on. So... We shall, we shall find out what's going on. So if I pop that cap out, something else has gone, has happened here, I think, that um, maybe I haven't seen. So by popping this capacitor back out, I'm just going to um, do two things. First of all, I'm going to... Um, tack the stabister back on so i can do everything on the back of the board now so if i tack this stabister back on now i think the positive was there wasn't it the positive was the manky end yeah so I'm going to stick the stabister back on first and see if it suddenly springs into life. If it doesn't, then we know that there's some um, an issue elsewhere and not what we're trying to do. Because I've got a funny feeling we're trying to fight a fault that's not what I've done. You know what I mean? What I'm trying to say is Sod's Law prevails and we've probably got another fault here. So that's a stabista just tacked on the back now. Look, can you see that? Now, if this works, we know that our little hash up circuit is not right. If it doesn't work, then we know there's an issue somewhere else. Because it was working. Right, so as I suspected, it's not working. That's because I haven't got the speaker connected now. This, <laughs> so forget that. Let's try that again. Okay, so with the stabister in, we're still not working. So it's not what I've done, it's something else. <laughs> So the capacitor is disconnected and Sammy the Stabista is back on the job. Now, let me just double check. That is definitely the right way around. So I wonder whether we've got a break here still somewhere. Let me just have a look here, underneath this tape. <sighs> 
So we have an issue, and it's not what I did. No sound, is speaker not working properly? Yeah, you're definitely right. I need another, another swig of beer. So cheers, everybody. I don't know what camera's going where now. I've got this one here. I didn't even know I had this one turned on, but, you know. Cheers, everybody. I think I think I got less wet, less less wound up there. <laughs> We're all right, Les. We're all right. We're still in the room. Right. So something's not right here. It's not what I did at all. It's something else. So I think I've upset this radio by um, by ripping out its stabister, and it's really upset with me now. Let's see where this track goes. So I think it goes down to there by the looks of it. So let's get our meter on continuity. We'll just give this a quick buzz out from there to there. Open. Okay, what is that? No, actually that might be there. Okay, where does that go to then? Does that come up to here? Right, something's amiss here. I'm just wondering whether that is not quite tacked back there. Something's amiss. So at the moment, I'm just trying to find where that pin there goes to on the circuit. So let's have a look on Gear's very nice circuit info. Yeah, the dial lamps work. Um, I did. I did that, Gear. The dial lamps are a working. Right, so that's that way up. So I'm just using this to trace the um, circuit a minute. Let's see if we've got a break here. Let's see if we have a break. It might be that that repair that I did down there hasn't taken across properly, you see. That's what I'm thinking. I'm hoping it has, but um, it might not have done. We can also check, just make sure we are in continuity mode. We can check between it there and there. See, we haven't got continuity there either. What's going on here? We should have continuity to there as well. Okay, there's gremlins at play here. We're trying, to, we're trying to fix a fault that's not there again. This is the problem. This is the joy of live streaming repairs. I think we were good the first time around. But sod's law and all the rest of it. doesn't look like it looks like potentially that bit there's lifted for some reason so let me just put a jumper in here a minute
and one there. So we should definitely have continuity there now. You've got to have faith, you see. It wasn't. It wasn't that. We've got another situation. All right. Okay. We've now got that connected. So let's um try that again. You see, you have no faith. To help prevent energy crises and keep future costs down. Plus, we're the biggest generator of zero carbon electricity. Right, so... All you doubters... It's, it's, it wasn't my Stabister set up. It wasn't my Stabister setup, you see. It was a dodgy joint on the board here. So let me now go back to what I was doing before. I'm going to tack it on the back of the board for testing purposes at the moment. Am I? No, maybe I'm not. So I'm going to stick my capacitor back in the correct way round. I can line it up and put that solder line back down. Sorry if you can't see a lot here at the moment, but um, I've got my great head in the way. Right, capacitor's back in. The capacitor lives. So, what I want to do... And where's my diode tree gone? Well, we can we can play with the LED now. We can play with the LED. So let's um let's get you zoomed back out again a minute. So I've just got this bridge wire in now because we've still got a break on that new piece of copper that I put in. For some reason it's lifted. I don't know why it's lifted there, but it was a good connection there just now, but it's not now. So now I'm going to try putting this in. Just going to hold it across the two connections. And we shall see. So it's sort of not really wanting to work. So let's go. Okay, so that works with the LED. So what have I done with my little diode tree? Oh no, where's it gone? Where's my little diode tree? I love that tree. I love that tree. There he is. Let's do the same again. So that needs to be to the positive, so that's that way around. Nothing that way. Just try that the other way around because 
Yeah, definitely not conducting that way. 60 milliamps, a bit high. Let's go back that way. 40, 50. It sounds better with the LED in. Sounds better with the LED in, people. So let me just um, do an experiment then. Let's do a bit more experimenting. <laughs> well, let me just double check that again. That's that way. Okay. I'm gonna try and somehow connect both together there. I'm going to connect them one at a time and we'll have a look, listen to the difference in the audio between the two, between the diode, well, between the LED and the diode tree. It's difficult to try and explain what the hell I'm doing. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> it's difficult to explain what I'm doing here. Let me just see if I can get the camera in. So you can see that I'm joined. I'm joined here. Well, you can't because I'm in the way. Always in the way, aren't I? So you can see I'm joined here with the LED and the diode package, and I'm, I've got them both sort of placed on the board there. So let's turn it on. So firstly the diode was in charge of the Johann Strauss Orchestra and first we heard Daniel Lotokovich bringing us Bach's Violin Concerto in E. The Bavarian Radio Chamber Orchestra were providing the backup. That's not sounding as nice now. Thank you for choosing Classic FM this Sunday evening. Let us make the most of what's left of the weekend in each other. And a new of Schubert, a classic FM album of the weekend. Right now, heard from S. Bach, so how about we keep it in the fact. Take his turn in the spotlight. They sound the same to me. But momentarily, can't get it to stay on there. See, when you lift off, and so it's on there at the moment, but it's very hissy, if you know what I mean. It might just be the fact that I've got no aerial. Oh. <laughs> that was 
what it looks like. One big round ear hanging up. <laughs> okay. Higher towards a car company conference on the way home. Yeah, it's not it's quietening, so in, it's if you know what I mean. Exactly. But other ironic and coincidental thing. Okay. So final then, let's try the Stabista back in. If I can find it. Where's it gone to now? It's, it's working, but it just doesn't sound as it should do. It's, it's got too much hiss on it. Whether that is that, I don't know. Let's, um, So basically, the, those two sound the same. So let's try it now with the Stabister. So diode. That's a diode. Stabister. Oh, the same. No difference. Okay, no difference. So maybe we need to do some um, work on the amplifier then. I'm trying to find a fault that's not there yet again. <laughs> so, I think we've got a plan there anyway. So it's working with the negative side of the diode to the positive side of the capacitor. If you know what I mean. So let's see if I can get, get it back in shot again because I've moved the camera out of the way. Apologies a minute while I just refocus reassess and all that blue sky thinking and everything what's going on with these cameras i'm just not 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 with it there we go so sort of focus darken it down a little bit and zoom in so stripe here stripe here go into the negative side of what was the Stabista, which is now the capacitor. So, one other thing I need to just check is that we've got continuity. between here and I think is it that one yeah okay so we've got continuity now both sides so that's not an issue let's turn it on again then We've got copyright material. There might be some of these lights in here interfering with the signal. This is the problem I've got. I'm not going to know until I take it out of the room. Camerata, 
almost time to hear from the Classic FM album of the weekend. But first, Tchaikovsky. I don't know, what do you think? It's just an aerial thing, it's nothing to do with my stabista. Let's, let's get back into stabista land. <laughs> right. Really want some speech, really. Immerse myself in this story very close to home. So, if I grab the aerial, that's not going to do it. It's been. That's not doing on that. <laughs> So you can hear the changes as I touch the aerial. So it could just be aerial trimming on that now. I think the Stabista thing is done. What a game, isn't it? The Stabista is good. Right. Let's just catch up with some chat a minute because I'm sure there's lots of comments going on here. <laughs> right. Push a button, see the dumps. Yeah, we've done that. Positive and negative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. life situation repair yeah i thought it had to be because i just couldn't understand why why nothing was working even putting the old stabista back in it had to be didn't it it just had to be so keep the stabista it will perform way better <laughs> it's not actually it's doing it's doing its voltage bang on Are you looking three figures possibly, Mike, for one that's been done? Graham's diode tree. <laughs> A nice sounding LED. Easier to use LED. LED works better. It is exactly the same. I've just tried it soldered now. It must have just had my finger in it, giving it a bit of capacitance, but... Everyone's for the LED. You're all you're all diode haters, aren't you? Rob's <laughs> yeah, thanks, Rob. He just covered the diode, the LED cost. Can you measure the voltage while testing the LED and the diodes? Yeah, we can do that. Um, dear. Better than diodes, Rich is saying. I think someone else said that earlier, didn't they, Rich? That um, they used the 10 NF might help. Yeah, Matambly saying about the fuzz sounds it is an area issue. It's not the IF. Well, it could be IF. It's not amplifier. It could be IF still. You see, that's all I was thinking. It might need a tweak. Put a 10 NF cap on. As long as you have a 1.5 volt across whatever you have there, then 
good to go. A few unsoldered legs on the board. Not really, they're just, I need to recap it. So the line is the negative, excellent. Thanks, Chris. Alanis Morissette, that's going to be a... I'm going to have to mute that later, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, I, w I will do, Gia. Yeah, it's really bad. I mean, we had two dry joints there, didn't we? I'm still, I'm still going. You can't have about 10 unsoldered joints? Unsoldered. No. Transmit a sine wave through an FM transmitter and scope the output. See which one clips the most. You bet the diode. I am the Stabista King now. Heath. Earthing. It could be earthing, but... You would see which solution causes most clipping. I was just going to show you the um, voltage that we've got. So uh, if I turn it on again, the voltage here between positive one point five seven look so what we could do is a bit of an experiment if I can get it the right way right way round <laughs> oh dear I think the beer's taking effect now. The white way round. It's good because I can do the experiment and so you don't have to. Right, okay. Birmingham Symphony Orchestra. I'm LED. It's the third in their set of recordings of all of Schubert's symphonies. But they're being a little... So the LED is slightly better, 1.52, look. In this volume, we get to his symphony number four and number one. Schubert wrote his first symphony when he was 16. Imagine, music like this, composed by a teenager. <laughs> One point five three. One point five three. I'm sure it's one point five six. So back with the diode tree, the cruncher diode tree. Ah, oh. what's going on with this? Why is it climbing? <laughs> it seems to be climbing as it's warming up really let's get you in a bit closer on that camera
so 1.56, 1.57 there. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you could well be right there, Gio. Let's tune out of that station then. So that's 1.568. Let's tune back into that. A little bit, not a lot. Okay. Let's um, do the same with the LED then. Let's just desolder that again. Let's pop the LED back in. Nice little glow on the LED, look. <laughs> it's not a very big glow, to be fair. It's only a little, a little glow. So you can see that climbing as well, look. P, what, what is that, Rob? You just all, you all hate my LEDs. You want the diode, you want the LED. I mean, you hate my diodes, you want the LED in, don't you? You LED lovers. Yeah, you're right, Ken. It's climbing gradually, isn't it? Hopefully this is not copyrighted. Sort of stabilised out at 1.54, isn't it? Climbing gradually, but see, I've got a lot of these, a lot of red LEDs here. So if I go on to diode mode with my meter, I've just got a handful of different, there's even a smaller one there, look. Just see what differences these are. Because obviously the closer we can get to 1.5, the better, I suppose. Um, that one's 1.509. Seems like we may be going the, down the LED route here, isn't it? 1.51, so that one's worse. What about this little baby one, look? Or oh, we took totally barking up the wrong tree with a smaller one. Yeah, 1.6. Another big one. 1.53. Let's try some more. Maybe we want one slightly under, so as when it warms up, it's bang on. I don't know. 
five two. Five two. Five three. Surprising how different they are, isn't it? Oh. Four eight nine. One point four eight nine is under better than over, I wonder. It's under better than over, so we've got without we've got a choice of those two. I wonder what this one actually reads then. Let's just have a look at this one. Let's quickly heat that. So look at the one that I've got in circuit. 1.52 out of circuit, look. So I wonder if we put in... That one. <laughs> it's never ending, isn't it? Let's put in... This is the 1.50. Take those other diodes out of the way. Let's get that bridge back in there. Right, okay. So I've put, put the lower diode in now. Still reading 1.53, look. Mind you, I have to just heat it up, I suppose. Yeah, the stabista's poorly. The stabista is not good. <clears throat> Let's just try the lowest value cap we've got in here then. This is the one that was reading 1.49 pretty much, wasn't it? Marsalis and the English Chamber Orchestra were conducted by Anthony Newman. Charlotte will be here on Classic FM with tonight's... Well, that's better. 1.51, That's about as good as we're going to get. So what's going on with the chat now? There's some things going on here. Let me just catch up with you lot. Well, what, are you, what are you saying beyond my back here? Let's get back up to the chat. You want the stabister? <laughs> the stabister is nasty. Glue in baker light. Oh no. Um, I suppose epoxy and 
try and mix up some of the dust from the Bakelite. Where's Les gone? Les, Les has blown a fuse. Les, where are you? He's up, he's back. Clean the stepister and connect a new cap across it. You listen to classic FM, it put you to sleep. The stepister is de stepisterized. <laughs> it is, it is, isn't it? Can you do an autopsy on the stepister? You're still there, that's good. We haven't lost you. Um, did we check the voltage of the stabister in circuit? I can't remember if we did. But let's do it anyway. So we know this is this is our favourite our favourite LED at the moment is this one. This is going to be the one that we're going to fit. Being that it seems to be doing exactly the same job as the diodes but with less heat stability issues, I think that's a good call. Stabister. Sabister, back, Sabister, Stabister even, back in the house. Why won't that go in there now? Why won't you go in there? Let's see what the um, voltage is with S S Stabister. With free investment coaching and low fees, get up to £1,000 cash back when you transfer to us at Best Investment. Would help if I wasn't in you work hard continuity money, mode still. Invested. Your capital is at risk. Turn supply. See, that's Start had it. That's two point. Slam. That's two point one volts, look. More music breakfast with Tim Leoro. With regular news and travel updates, weekday mornings from six. That is the sound of your group chat talking about The Last of Us on Sky again. It Do does sound better though. Of a dish or a long contract. Well, say hello to Skystream, the new simple way to get Sky with no dish that you can cancel. Why does it sound better at 2.1 volts, people? Let's just confirm this again. Stick our LED back in. Oh, God, I don't know which one it was now. Oh, dear, oh dear. I tried to specifically, specifically, specifically put that to one side. Twenty second, seventy years ago, music for coronations. Listen on your radio and on global play. Starts tonight at nine. Classic FM. That's the closest one to 1 1.5. Look at that. It's virtually bang on. A backstabbing Stavista. No stabbing. <laughs> Thanks, Metamble. You know, we, I got your back. But I'm sure I got more hiss that way. Sounds better with the higher voltage, you know. I know I'm just picking. Clutching at straws now, let's just stick the higher voltage one back in. Oh, nah, it's about the same. 
No, it's about the same. Okay, let's um, let's sort some stuff out here now. Then let's get some. Um, Let's get this Stabista issue wrapped up because I think that's all we're going to be able to do for today now. It's definitely going to be coming out again next week, this one. So if you want part two of the uh, TP41, which is going to be um, checking the alignment really and replacing those amplifier caps, bearing in mind we're not even, we're not even on the... Um, we're not even on the original speaker at the moment, so doing pretty good doing pretty good can I do an autopsy on this Debista? we could try but I'm gonna to need to probably get that done uh, through the Stabista sounds fizzier sounds the same finally a good sound I turn it off on oh, Martin I apologize Let's um let's get this sorted then because I need to find out why the hell why have we got a broken track here? We should not have a broken track. So I need that and I need my one of my pokey pokey probes. I need a pokey pokey. Let's get a pokey pokey one. So I think we're going to go with the LED purely because it seems slightly more stable. So let's just null this meter out a minute if we can. Right, just going to check resistance on this board. So from here to here, I should have it's got thirteen k. So from here to here, good. Here to here. No, so there's a break here somewhere. There's a break there, so I need to sort that a minute. It's underneath my solder mask. <clears throat> it's underneath my solder mask here somehow. I really don't know how this is um, happening, to be fair, but, you know... It definitely had a good connection, unless it's just lifted. Uh, yeah, it looks like it might have lifted, and the solder mask has gone underneath it. Right. We're going to have to pop a little bit of wire across to that because uh, it's going to mess up everything I've just done else. It's going to be a very neat little bit of wire. Yeah, I think that corrosion, a little dot of corrosion has stopped that going across, I reckon. I 
a little bit of flux. A bit of soda. Try again. I I'll put a little bit more solder on that because I'm not happy that's not really gone right the way. This is where it's gonna go go pear shaped, but um you know. See what I mean? <laughs> it had to go pear shaped, didn't it? Not to worry. Better. All right, let's just test that once more, one last time. I just want to get a little bit more solder on it, that was all. So from there to there. Yeah, job done. So let's get rid of the flux. More soda mask. Catch you later, Martin. Yeah, I think we're going with the LED, aren't we? All, all those, all those diode haters. And you, you knew you were going to get the better of me, didn't you? <laughs> Right, I'm just going to put some more um, soda mask on this. UV lamp. UV. heat Bit of beer. Oh, this stuff gets everywhere, the soda mass, this green stuff. Big lump of it on my hand there. Eh? Send me a ferret. 
Tight rod, yeah, I know, it's a shame. Thanks very much, Gia, for sending this radio anyway, it's a beauty. I used to keep ferrets. I used to keep ferrets. Fitchies. Always said Fitchies. You didn't want the hobs. They were too uh, aggressive. Everyone wants the LED. I see what you're saying, dear. Yeah, yeah, it could be for, from 12 volts. It could be better with 12 volts, couldn't it? It does say that the output increases when you uh, hit it with 12 volts. So let's have a look at the ferret. I suspect that's just been damaged in the post year to be fair there's a, there is a chunk missing out of it but um it's a fairly clean break yeah it would be nice to have the right one i suppose if that's not too much of a pain Yeah, it does certainly looks like it's had a good old beating, to be fair. I didn't notice that till somebody said. It's pointless trying to do it while you're working on a radio, really. It's best to leave fixing the ferrite rod to the very last minute. Right, what I want to do is make sure that one's pushed right in, which I think it is. Now we've got to get our ferret of choice across. Across the cap. Right. Just putting the LED in a minute. I've got plenty of solder on it from the, the diode tree.
he says. Not quite enough solar to grow. Okay, well, there he is. One last go. Will it work now? Hang on. Classic FM. It's a tough time for small business owners. Rising costs and uncertainty potentially on their mental health. But Lloyds Bank and Mental Health UK have partnered to help, offering free therapeutic coaching sessions to business owners across the country. Like Emma, who runs ELP Barbershop in London. Running a business has been really difficult in the last three years. What's going on here then? Something's... The techniques I'm learning are helping me be a better business owner and to better understand how stress affects the mind and the body. What I've learned won't just help me now, it'll help me in the long term to keep myself and the business healthy. To book your own coaching session and for practical guidance on building visit bank.com slash stronger mind lloyd's bank by the side of business experience it comes up when planning to go on an all-inclusive there course. it's knowing that all-inclusive can mean too inclusive having to get your wallet out every 10 minutes included endless queues included being crowded or done Dining. There you go. Gratuities included. Your own balcony included. Dining on mass. Ivan. Not included. Fix fer fix ferrite with quick glue. Search Saga Boutique Cruises. Saga experiences everything over 50s only. For tips and advice on keeping your furry friend fit and healthy this active dog month, visit petsinandpickle.co.uk. It's time to go. The fever came and the good Lord mopped his brow. And he left as much. At mobile, we know everyone likes getting a little extra help. So when you buy an unlimited sim for just 20... That's pretty good. That sounds good. Card points. Letting you fill your boots. Costs are a big... So we build a thoughtful design with forward thinking product innovation and service that's always there to make your space as special as it should be. Myra showers. Make your bathroom. Your Money Super 7, your mission. Saving Britain on their household bills. What have we got? I can save people up to £170 on their home insurance. Broadband! I beg your pardon. Sorry, boss. Big mission. I can save people on broadband and travel insurance. Oh, a multitasker and a multi-saver. See how much you can save today with Money Supermarket.
51% of consumers could save up to £170.96. Consumer I think that's job done, people. UK only. Get the most out of your busy routine with new Skechers hands-free slip-ins. No bending over, no tying laces, just step it. I know the ferret is bothering you. I know the ferret. The ferret be bothering me. The ferret be bothering me, doesn't it? The busted ferret be bothering me. So let's let's deferret the ferret, shall we? Where are we? He's broke. He's broke. Oh, right. Where's me? Where's me super glue? Super glue's the best job for this. To be fair. The better the super glue, the better the job. You don't really want epoxy. Epoxy would work, but the problem is, is, is it's quite. You need it fairly thick to get a good um, bond with super glue. You don't. Have I got any super glue? This is the question. I did have once upon a time, but you know. That was in a land far, far away. Oh, there we are. There we go. Here we go. Here we go. <sighs> Yoo-hoo. Ultra fast, allegedly. Let's stick. Stick. Let's stick. Ooh, too much. Too much, Graham. No. You don't want that much? Right. That blobbed right out then. You really don't need a lot. The more you've got, the worse of a joint you're going to get. So I'm just going to just dab that off and stick it back together there. It's not going to do it now, is it? It ain't going to do it now. You're all watching. I may have just taken a little bit too much off. Okay. I may have just taken a little bit too much off. So you've really got to just feel for the joint and try and push it back exactly where it was. No, I haven't got a good grip on it. <sighs> Super glue ain't what it used to be, is it? It just is not what it used to be. No, it's not not bonded properly. I'm going to end up with my hand stuck to this in a minute. Sort of looks like it's gone, but um, we'll see. Super glue used to stick instantly, but it doesn't anymore, does it? Oh 
Let me just see what we're on. So we're on medium wave with a new glued ferret. Moisture. That is, well, I'm, I'm knocking that quite hard. That is set. Let's see if we can tune some medium wave in then. Too much noise. You know what this calls for, don't you? Derek's, ah, Derek's modulator. Modulator time. See you later, modulator. Right, let's get the um, modulator fired up. Let's fire him up. Let me think, what should we, what should we connect to today, Graham? What should we, we'll, let's connect up to my hi-fi today. So we're connected to the hi-fi, let's chuck that over there. Let's pop that on. I'm still here. I'm still here, everybody. I've not run away. The beer's run out. The beer has run out. Right, okay, let's power that on. What have we got? Anything in the cassette deck? Nothing in the cassette deck at the moment. Anything in the mini disc deck? Nothing in the mini disc deck either. Where's this poor? This is very poor. This is very poor. Have we got any mini discs up? I don't even think I've got a test mini disc up here actually, and this is one in one of the pliers. Nope. Um Was playing Heart FM at the moment, which we don't want. We don't want something that we've already got, do we? It's going to have to be a, a cassette, and let's find a cassette. What have we got here? What have we got? Uh, let's put uh, some nice music on for you. Let's turn the radio on. So this was set at 400 metres. Let me just find 400 metres on the dial. It's in kilohertz. <laughs> so it's at 750 kilohertz. So it should be, it should be. Oh, it is, it is. I've got it on radio, I need it on tape.
of Turkey and... That's a bit noisy, but the, I've got what's I've got all sorts of other stuff on here. Well, there you are. That's a little sneak preview of, of the Christmas live streams that just coming up there now. <laughs> I don't know how many days. Yes, it's always, always in use, Derek. It's the new live stream transmitter and available from Mr. Derek Cooper himself. So that's all I've done. I've got that connected into the headphone socket of my um, hi-fi. Which is playing a Christmas tape at the moment. <laughs> Gotta love it on me. There we are. Well, I think we've definitely proved that um, We've sorted the Stabister. I mean, we could have done it with the diodes, but it seems like the LED may be more stable, less, less affected by heat, and maybe a better, a better, I can't remember what you called it now, some, some thingy, thingy jiggy. <laughs> a, a better waveform, maybe. Right, let's get off of that. Uh, what's going on now? We've got all sorts of stuff coming up. <laughs> I'm pretty much done, people. I am pretty much done. Let's just catch up with the um, with the chat. I'm going to have to carry on with this next week, and we'll get the caps done next week. It was uh, really interesting messing about with that, though. But the um, the ferrite appears to have set. Appears to have set. To be fair, so I have got some um, some more ferrite rods. So probably I've got one that fits some um, gear. So I, I wouldn't worry about sending me one. We'll see if I've got one. Oh, so walk down with the grave then. Cheers, Luigi. That King Cole, yeah. Bob Penguin enjoyed the Christmas music. He was. He was down here. I think. In fact, I think we got some droppings on the floor. He got so excited. He's, he's coughed up a fish. I think. He's coughed up a fish on the floor. <laughs> Cheers.
so there we are people it's been a bit disjointed today with the messing about with the stream deck not working i need to get to grips with that find out what's going on um but we've done the stabister we've proved that the old one was knackered and we've um repaired the board we've done all sorts of stuff today so uh yeah been really interesting and uh, we now know which way around to put everything. So anybody that's doing one of these, it's going to take them a while to fathom this video out, isn't it? It really is. But um, we got there in the end. So cheers, everybody. Thanks again for the super chats and the PayPal tips. Much, much appreciated. And thanks to my Patreons. Um, they had a sneak preview of this radio before you lot. So uh, a couple of days ago, I put a load of pictures up for them to have a look at. So. Uh, worth joining if you're not a channel member or a patreon then please um feel free to join and uh, you'll get to grips with what i'm up to in the week so let's see if i can get this this all working now right i will catch you soon next sunday if not before bye for now